Welcome to our review on carbon allotropes. So the first thing we need to know is where we locate carbon on the periodic table. And you'll find that it's in group 4, or if you're using the IUPAC groupings, then that's 14. So because it's in group 4, that means we've got 4 electrons in the outer shell. So because we've got 4 electrons in the outer shell, carbon can form 4 covalent bonds. And it can form those bonds with either other carbon atoms or with other elements. One word we need to know the meaning of is the phrase allotrope. Now, when we're talking about an allotrope, we're talking about different forms of an element in the same state, but with different atomic arrangements. So a good example would be the carbon allotropes of diamond and graphite. They're both carbon in the solid state, but the arrangement of those carbon atoms is different, which gives them very different properties. So the first allotrope of carbon we're going to look at is diamond. Now its structure is in the bottom left there and you can see that in that diagram it looks kind of like a triangle and that's the easiest way to remember it. So diamond is a giant covalent structure where every carbon atom is joined onto four others. Now if we consider some of the properties of diamond, it's got a high melting point and is hard and the reason behind those two properties is that we've got a large number of covalent bonds. Now, covalent bonds are very strong, and that means in order to break them, we need a lot of energy to be put in. So to break large numbers of covalent bonds, we need lots of energy, which is why we have that high melting point and it's got that hard structure. Second property we're going to consider is the fact that diamond does not conduct electricity. Now, the reason for that is that it does not have any free electrons or delocalized electrons. All of the electrons within carbon structure are being shared to form covalent bonds with other carbons. So we've got no delocalized electrons, therefore cannot conduct electricity. The second allotrope of carbon we're going to look at is graphite. Now, if you look at the picture in the bottom left, graphite kind of looks like a load of sheets stacked up. So it would be represented just by simple lines, one on top of the other, if you want a simple version. Again, graphite is a giant covalent structure where each carbon atom is bonded to three others. So that's the key difference between diamond and graphite. Diamond is bonded to four others, graphite three others. So that means we've got an electron not being used in bonding and that electron becomes delocalized. So what we find in terms of the properties of our graphite, it still has a high melting point because we've still got large number of covalent bonds which require a lot of energy in order to be broken. But there are some differences between diamond and graphite. Graphite has this slippery texture because what we find is that even though the covalent bonds holding those carbon atoms together are very strong, the forces between the layers are actually very weak and therefore are easily overcome. So those sheets of graphite can slide over the surface of each other. The other one to bear in mind is that graphite will conduct electricity for the simple fact that, as we've said, it has a delocalized electron from each carbon atom. So because we've got delocalized electrons, that means it can conduct electricity. Our third allotrope of carbon is what's a relatively modern version which is a stuff called graphene. Now do go careful not to mix up graphene and graphite. Graphene is the carbon allotrope that's pretty much a single layer of our graphite. Now it's got some pretty impressive properties. It's extremely strong. It will conduct electricity and it's almost transparent. So this is something that a large number of tech companies are looking into doing a lot of research into to see what they can do with it because it has potentially massive implications for tech of the future. The last allotropes of carbon we're going to look at are the fullerenes. Now fullerenes are the family of carbon allotropes that are shaped like tubes or balls. So if it's in the shape of a tube then we refer to it as a nanotube and that's pretty much like having a sheet of graphene rolled up to make the tube as you can see on the left there. And we'll use these nanotubes to reinforce sports equipment like tennis rackets because they're incredibly strong. Another type of fullerene is a buckyball. Now buckyballs are in the bottom left there. They're made of 60 carbon atoms all joined together to make this sphere. 
Now, these have potential uses in terms of lubricants or as drug delivery systems. Because of their slippery nature and because they've actually got that hollow structure, we could potentially put things like drugs inside them, like a little cage, and then they could be targeted drug delivery systems. Hopefully at the end of this video you do know about the different allotropes of carbon, so you need to know their names, their general structures and what they look like, and also what gives them those key properties. So why do they have the high melting points? Why are some able to conduct electricity? So do make sure that you don't mix up graphite and graphene, as that is one of the most common ones. But other than that, just make sure you know those key features.